A transgenic animal is an animal in which a foreign gene has been inserted. Foreign DNA is introduced into the animal using recombinant DNA technology and then it must be transmitted through the germline so that every cell including the germ cells of the animal contain the same modified genetic material. So to sum up this page is that so uh, we insert a foreign DNA into the animals to observe some specific characters into that animal. For doing so, we use recombinant DNA technology and by doing so, uh, the DNA is transmitted to the offsprings. And uh, we do so because uh, we want uh, food, milk, wool, disease, resistance, production of some proteins, etc. And for doing transgenesis, we use several in, uh, animals, including fish, farm animals, and mouse. Mouse is the uh, most preferable animal for transgenesis experiment because of its short generation time, because of its easy implantation, and because we obtain high number of offs offsprings. So the first method we are going to talk about for the transgenesis in mice is the microinjection of DNA into the pronucleus of the fertilized egg. For doing so, first of all, let me tell you that this method is the most popular and commonly used method for the introduction of the exogenous DNA into mice. To move further, let's discuss the procedure of this method. First of all, the female mice are hormonally induced to super ovulate and then they are mated with the male mice. After 22 hours, they are killed and oviducts are removed into the buffered salt solution for preservation. After that, the oviducts are dissected to release the fertilized eggs. Then the eggs are washed and kept at 37 degrees Celsius in the cultured media. The eggs are then observed under microscope to distinguish between the two pronuclei. Here, the two pronuclei means that one is from the female mouse and the other one is from the male mouse. The male pronucleus is larger than the female pronucleus, so it is chosen for injection. So remember that the injection is being given to the male pronucleus. So one to two picoliters of buffer containing the cloned plasmid DNA is injected into the male pronucleus. And after the injection, the pronucleus just doubles in size by injection. 40 to 60 eggs are injected in one hour and then they are stored in the cultured media. Many of the eggs may lie because obviously every cell is not going to get the DNA. Then uh, 10 to 20 fertilized eggs which have been gene manipulated are introduced, reintroduced in the pseudo-pregnant female mice. Now, let me explain what is this pseudo-pregnant female mice. The female mice are made pseudo-pregnant by mating with the vasectomized males. This means that they will be in the correct hormonal state to allow the implanted embryo to, the, to development. So, after that, the tail blot is carried out to detect the presence of foreign DNA in the offspring. So in this tail blood procedure, the blood is collected from the tail, the DNA is prepared and probed to check the presence of specific introduced sequences. Now 25% of the surviving injected embryos are transgenic and these are the founder animals. Now let's look upon the advantages and disadvantages of this micro injection method. The advantage is that it is applic applicable to a wide variety of species. And uh, the method is relatively straightforward. That is, it is hassle-free. And then it is a rapid method. And we obtain stable integration of the genomic DNA with the foreign DNA. And uh, the disadvantages of this method are that the efficiency of obtaining the transgenesis is relatively low even with the most skillful uh, worker. Then the site of integration is random. Site of integration is random. And uh, it is variable in individuals. It can be non-existent if introduced into the silent regions. And the number of copies that integrate is highly variable. Number of integrating by copies are variable. The next
next method of transgenesis in mice is the retroviral infection of the fertilized egg. To increase the probability of expression, the gene transfer is mediated by means of a carrier or a vector. The retroviruses are commonly used as vectors to transfer the genetic material into the cell because of their ability to infect the host cells. The offsprings obtained from this method are chimeric, that is, not all the cells carry the retroviruses. The, trans uh, the transmission of the gene is possible only if the retrovirus integrates into some of the germ cells. So uh, the procedure is that we do co-cultivation of four to eight cell-free embryos with the virus producer cells or by injecting the virus into the blastocyst that is the initial stages of the development in vitro. Then the infected pre-embryos are returned to the pseudo-pregnant recipients and they are allowed to develop. The advantages of this method is that uh, it is an effective and efficient method. And the limitation is that or the disadvantage is that the live birth animals, the live animals containing the transgene is extremely low and the uh, maximum of 8 kb of the exogenous dna can be inserted into the retrovirus and uh, the third one is that the offsprings are mosaics are genetic mosaics because more than one cell in the embryo may be infected and the virus may integrate at various positions. The third method is the genetic alterations of embryonic cells and their introduction into the blastocyst. So we use two type of cells in this method. The first ones are the embryonic stem cells and the other one is the embryonal carcinoma cells. Embryonic stem cells and the embryonal carcinoma cells. The embryonic stem cells contribute to the germ cells and they colonize in the germ cells more efficiently than the embryonal carcinoma cells and these embryonal carcinoma cells do not form the germ cells and their efficiency of colonizing the blastocyst is extremely less and uh, let me explain here that what a blastocyst is. A blastocyst is a structure formed in the earlier development of the mammals. So if uh, our foreign gene gets inserted here, there is high chance that we will obtain the offspring with the gene insert. So the procedure is that the genes are introduced into either this embryonic stem cells or the embryonal carcinoma cells in vitro. And then the embryonal stem cells or the carcinoma cells are introduced into the pre-embryo in the blastocyst stage and then we obtain the transgenic chimeras. Limitation of this method is that the rate of transgenesis is slow.